my name is Batana Vundla, I'm the co-producer on Ibokwe. Uh, my name is John Trengove, I'm the writer-director of Ibokwe. The plot is um, uh, a young man who's undergoing his traditional initiation into manhood, traditional circumcision initiation into manhood, um, finds himself abandoned by his elders, uh, and it's alluded that it is because of the young man's sexuality, the fact that he is gay. Kolat. Nunga ina mkwati. Sala sala poko tin. Ono kwa zungu na dinge. Malibu sasa kolo inungo. Ndoni ngo kukala ndo. Bede ngali. Uma mufoni. Ese transkai ukale ukolo ukunga kwa zungu zangu ya ubunge. Dayas. Ute u utanda z uma u ujokanda z la na. Okay, come you do funile? I am quiet. No me. Has your movie actually also been screened already in, in South Africa? Yeah, we had one, um, one press screening right before we came. Mm -hmm. but, you, but effectively this is the beginning of the, of the life of the film. So I'm sure we'll have more screenings after Berlin in South yeah. Africa. Yeah. And pre-screening means it was just a few people? or the cast and crew yeah. and, and press. some press, yeah. Okay. Yeah. How did they react? I mean, it's a... It's a... Um, it's a tricky thing for South African audiences in the sense that, they, that there's a lot of, uh, it's a very loaded subject matter, a lot of controversy that surrounds it. So I think South Africans are very aware of the, the kind of um, sensitivity of the, of the subject matter, maybe more so than an international audience. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess you have to explain, or at least you have to explain sure. to me, why is it a sensitive uh, yeah. subject? No. Well, it's a, uh, I don't know, do you want to take a stab uh, at it? Yeah. Uh, um, the, the, the initiation is meant to be um, sort of sh shrouded in secrecy. When you go, you're not meant to talk about what happens there. Um, and also, the, the other con controversy around it is that they, uh, a lot of um, botched circumcision happen. So that's what g it gives it a lot of bad press uh, back home. So, so I suppose, yeah, those two things um, sort of make it the, sort of very uh, taboo thing to talk about and very, um, yeah, Sort of tricky to to approach it. Yeah, um, let, yeah, let's learn make a movie about it. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very emotional issue for people. Um, that uh, you know, it's a, it's an ancient tradition, and it's considered the most important thing that happens to a man in his life. When you, as a, a, a also man specifically. Um, and as as Bat says, there's a there's a taboo of, of secrecy around it. So to to talk about it and to um, not just talk about it and show it but also to, to uh, bring a gay uh, narrative into that context it's maybe a, can be seen as a double double taboo you know? mm -hmm. but so this whole reach is seen as something sacred as well Yes, Which yes. Is so important. Um, it's you're not considered a man unless you've gone um, to the mountain and, and just been circumcised there so mm -hmm. um, Myself, I, I didn't go to, to the mountain. Um, I suppose in, so in the certain parts of the country, then I wouldn't be considered a real man mm -hmm. because I didn't go through it. So it's, 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 yeah, it's um, like, yeah, because John says, like an ancient tradition that's been happening for, for yeah, for, um, and um, so, so yeah, um, yeah. And so in the movie, the, the brother comes the younger brother and sort of takes a bit care of him. Is that the normal process? Is that someone from the family takes care? No, so what happens in the film is that um, the initiate 
is supposed to have his elders, older, older men from his community, who come and supervise and, mm -hmm. and help him through the healing process after his circumcision. But for whatever reason, nobody arrives and no explanation is given. And, and so the responsibility falls on the young boy, who's really too young to be doing this, to, to stay with his older brother and, and try and take care of him. And, and so in the course of the film, there's an insinuation that maybe this boy has been abandoned because of his sexuality, mm. because, it's, because it's been discovered that he is gay. Mm. But he doesn't know, and we don't know for certain exactly what the reason is. And so his, his panic and his desperation uh, grows. It becomes greater and greater, as well as the, the kind of physical pain that he is in. So, so it's really a, a portrait of his, uh, of his anguish and, and his isolation. Mm -hmm. um, well, when I watched the movie, I have to admit, I wasn't really sure if this reference to his homosexuality is just sort of a suggestion that the mm -hmm. little brother is saying it as something, mm -hmm. well, he just says, mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. half joke, half serious, mm -hmm. or if it really is a reference to that the family found out. Well, exactly. I mean, I think it was something that I, I was, I didn't want to make a film that was too didactic or that kind of explained to an audience exactly what it was, but to, to simply allude to, to it. So, so in that scene, the boy is actually speaking, talking in his sleep. And so it's this idea that it's something that doesn't get acknowledged uh, consciously or you know, in a conversation, but that it's something that sits underneath the, the, the story. Mm -hmm. that, it's, that it's there, that it's present, that everybody knows about it, but it doesn't get articulated. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. And so that is also sort of something new to see that someone a homosexual is in this process, that you filmed that and put that topic in there as well. And is, is that also something controversial? What do you think? Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> extremely. Um, just um, in South Africa, we have a, a constitution is, is uh, like one, like I think one of the best in the world, and you know we allow gay marriage, and uh, like rights are protected. But uh, on the ground, like in, in, in urban and rural areas, uh, there's a lot of homophobia. So, so you add like a context of homophobia, and then you know mix it with this, this very sacred ritual. You know that's uh, yeah, um, very 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 controversial. Mm -hmm. I think it's fair enough to say that it's something that hasn't really been spoken about. Obviously, it's it's existed, and and you know we we start from the the premise that it, homosexuality is as ancient as the ritual, that it's always been there, may, maybe not acknowledged or, or identified in the way that we might speak about it, but that it's always been there. And so there's this kind of unspoken and sort of uncomfortable way in which those two ideas sit next to each other. And and so certainly the the short film, but but also the the feature film that we're developing. Um, really kind of sits at that intersection of, of gay sexuality and, and traditional culture. Yeah. Mm. So, so I think it's worth saying that the, the short film is something that has come out of our process of making the feature. Um, through the, the research that, that we've done into the subject matter um, and the, the collaborations that we've had with uh, also writers who have themselves been through the, through the um, circumcision, um, we came across this story which is a, an excerpt from a novel by uh, Tando Olozana, who's somebody that we're working with, and we decided to make the short film as a, as a kind of a first step towards opening up this idea and, and introducing the, the world of, this, of the initiation to, to broader audiences. Mm. So, you can, so it can be seen as a kind of first step towards a, towards a bigger project. So our, our starting point um, between, uh, where we, was um, the premise that uh, far from being like a, a Western sort of, uh, sort of uh, imported sort of homo like homosexuality, like you know, like the, these Western African dictators, no, rather sorry, not dictators, African leaders are sort of banding about saying you know it's, it's a Western uh, uh, disease, it's, it's not African, as you know, um, yeah. So that's why we said like actually no, you know, it's like John said, it's it's, it's, it's like homosexuality is, a, it's, it's as African as as yeah as. Uh, um, yeah, so that's where we started off. So that's why you put it into the, this very traditional surrounding to combine those two things. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and I think also that the, the, the initiation specifically um, speaks about masculinity. Mm -hmm. It is so much a ritual about becoming a man and, and what it means to be a man, that it's, that it's actually a very rich and interesting platform to be 
to be talking about issues of, of gay identity and, and you know, the intimacy between men. Um, like I said, even if you don't call it gay, that it's something that exists and that has some kind of place there, mm. even if it's not something that is directly acknowledged. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so in that it's also challenging gender norms, I guess. Exactly. Mm. Exactly, and it's, it's very much something that we're conscious of, this idea that we'd like to present alternative um, alternative versions of African masculinity. And I think that there's that generally films, uh, both African and international films, kind of prescribe to certain ideas about what it means to be an African male. And I, I think what's interesting to me about the work that we're doing is that it's it's really about subverting those ideas and and and, and showing alternative forms of, of, of masculinity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, something else I didn't get in the movie, which might also be because of the cultural background, is when the boy leaves the tent, he's leaving it covered up with something, so he mm. cannot be seen. Mm. Why is that? Is that part of the reaches that he cannot be seen by others until he's still in yeah. there, or why was that? Well, it comes from the fact that he um, he is not allowed to leave the hut. The mm. idea is that you have to remain inside the hut for the first eight days after after the circumcision. So when he leaves the hut, he's effectively beginning to transgress the the ritual. Yeah. He's doing what he's not supposed to do. So so in a kind of a desperate uh, attempt to sort of remain respectful to the to the process that he's going through, there's this idea that he that he covers himself up, that he doesn't that he stays inside something, mm. even though he's left the hut. Yeah, because yeah. all you wear is uh, like a thong for a better lack of a better word um, and so that's like throughout the whole um, process that's all, all you wear so so yeah mm. the blanket's very specific to the ritual the white white blanket with the red stripes yeah. is is the is the traditional uh, blanket that is used and yeah. also the the clay he puts on that's also part of the traditional mm. rituals yeah yeah okay that's meant to uh, look like a goat mm -hmm. um, like a, a goat is uh, meant to sort of less than uh, like less than human in a sense so you you are during the process you you refer to as a goat initially is referred to as a goat mm -hmm. so um, yeah there's a line that he must look like the goat that he is yeah. Yeah. Hmm, that's that's interesting I mean you also mentioned this transgression and maybe also this transformation he's going through obviously mm. and in the end there is this goat but yeah. it's well, the question is, in a way, or was to me, did he really transform into a goat, or yeah. did the goat just replace him and he finally left and is free? Mm. I mean, I had the feeling that that was left open in the movie. Of course, yeah. I mean, and that and, and as that's that was the intention is to uh, is to leave it open to interpretation. But I think, as as Batana said, that the goat is a is an, a symbol that is already used inside the ritual. That's a it's a term that is used to refer to the initiates while they're in this process. And so we adopted the symbol of the goat um, in a way to speak about the character's dehumanization mm -hmm. by, in his abandonment. By the, the, the process that he's gone through has left him less than human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, will there be, well, when will the screening be in South Africa? Do you already know? Um, we don't. We're busy. We'll, we'll, we'll hopefully have several screenings. We're speaking to an independent um, uh, movie house in Johannesburg. And we'll hopefully have some screenings there first, and then there'll be uh, there's a gay and lesbian film festival in South Africa, and presumably we'll submit to them as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And what do you think will the reactions be like? Will there be a public discussion discussion about those things? Well, that's what we hope for. I mean, I mean, we're very conscious of the fact that speaking about the ritual is serious. It's not something that we're doing lightly or taking lightly, but we believe that what we're talking about is serious enough to to warrant that treatment. <coughs> also, we're not the first to, to speak about the initiation. Nelson Mandela wrote about it in his autobiography. Um, there have been some documentaries and literature exposés. Um, so, but, but, it, but yeah, I suppose I, our particular take, which is the kind of gay angle on this ritual, is the thing that is, is new and provocative. And, and yes, so, so in answer to your question, our intention is to provoke responses and to get potentially a larger community than just a gay audience to, to engage around the topic, to, to yeah. have an opinion. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I hope you will spark this discussion and that you will have a lot of discussions about it. And um, thank you very much for the interview. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.